Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on surgery shock case for breast examination. So generally, we ask the patient to lie in a semi-recumbent posture, which is 45 degrees, with the bed propped up. And then adequate exposure is undressed until the waist. On inspection, with the patient's arms at their side, we inspect the breast, compare both breasts, look at their symmetry, whether both breasts are symmetrical or not, any presence of scars that suggest for a previous breast surgery, ulcers, skin changes, or breast lump noted. After that, we look at the areola to assess the color, symmetry on both breasts, and any other changes. For nipple, there are seven D that we should look out for, which are discoloration, any nipple discharge, where we ask the patient to squeeze themselves, any depression of the nipple, or also known as nipple retraction, deviation, displacement, which is the level of the nipples on both breasts, and also any destruction, such as ulceration or erosion of the nipple. Also look at the arms for any signs of lymphoedema. Besides this, we also ask the patient to change their posture slightly, which includes sitting upright with their arms at the side and then press firmly against their waist. This is to look for any attachment of the breast tumor to the underlying pectoralis major muscle. Next, we ask them to sit upright while leaning forward and also sit upright with their arms raised above their head to look for any tethering of the breast tumor to the skin. So these are the four postures for inspection of the breast. Next, we will proceed to palpation. The position of the patient will be 45 degree supine with both their hands behind their head to ensure adequate exposure of the breast. So if we have seen any abnormal changes, for example, on the right side, then we start from the normal side first. So we palpate the left breast first and we use the flat of, their hand, of our hands during palpation. So we palpate the breast quadrant by quadrant and then proceed to the nipple and areola area. Feel for the temperature and also feel for any presence of breast lump. So if there is any lump, then we have to describe the lump, which include the side of the lump, the size, shape, surface, margin of the lump, consistency, whether it's soft, firm or hard or rubbery consistency, any tenderness noted, fluctuation, and also attachment to the skin or the muscle. This is for clinical staging of the breast lump. So besides this palpation, we also have to palpate the axilla for any palpable limb nodes. And the limb node grouping as including medial group, anterior, lateral, posterior, and apical groups. So this picture shows the lateral axillary nodes, posterior nodes, anterior, medial, and also apical nodes. So for example, for the right axilla, we will use our left hand to palpate. So when palpating for the limb nodes at the right axilla, we use our right hand to support the patient's arm and then use our left hand to palpate for the enlarged nodes and vice versa for the left axilla. This is for the medial, anterior, lateral and apical groups. Whereas for the posterior group I have highlighted in red over here, we will need to examine this posterior group of limb nodes from the back of the patient. So we use our right hand for the right side and left hand for the left side. We examine from the back of the patient while the patient's hands are on their shoulders. Continue with the supraclavicular lens glance while standing on the back of the patient and also with the neck glance. So if there is palpable axillary limb node, we have to further describe it. We have to say that there is presence of enlarged limb node, mention which group is it, whether it's anterior, medial, lateral, apical or posterior group, the number of the palpable limb nodes, consistency whether it's rubbery or hard, fixity to the chest wall whether it's mobile or immobile. This helps in the clinical staging. And also any tenderness noted and the limb nodes are discrete or matted. So in breast examination, we don't have to do any percussion or auscultation. And other examination that we can do to complete our examination would be checking the spine for any tenderness lungs for any pleural effusion and palpating the abdomen to look for hepatomegaly or ascites. Moving on to the discussion, these are some of the terminologies that are seen in breast examination, such as skin dimpling, 
or retraction shown in the first picture here. There is skin dimpling at the breast and this is due to tightening of the corpus ligaments in the breast. Whereas pull the orange, the second picture, this is also a commonly seen appearance in breast cancer and this appearance is due to obstruction of the lymphatic channel caused by the tumor cells. Whereas skin tethering is also another terminology and it happens due to attachment of the tumor to the underlying skin. We may also be asked on the surgical levels of the axillary limb nodes. So generally there are three levels. Level 1, shown in this picture, it is below the lower edge of the pectoralis minor. Level 2 is directly beneath the pectoralis minor. And level 3 is above or medial to the pectoralis minor muscles. So you can see this picture here. This is the pectoralis minor muscle. And there is level 1, level 2 and level 3 axillary limb nodes. Other than that, we might be asked on how would you like to approach the patient for this breast lump. So to investigate, we will need the triple assessment of the breast lump, which are divided into three parts. First part would be clinical history taking and physical examination. Second part would be imaging, which can be ultrasound or mammogram, depending on the patient's age. Younger patients will need ultrasound, and older patients will use mammogram, preferable. And third part would be pathology, which are fine needle aspiration cytology, FNAC, or core or true cut biopsy. So this is the triple assessment of breast lump. So if there is breast lump or bubble, the examiner may ask us what are our differential diagnosis. So depending on the appearance of the breast lump. But these are some of the causes of breast lump, which are including fibrocystic change of the breast, fibroadenoma, which is more commonly seen in young patients, breast carcinoma, more commonly seen in older patients, and other differential diagnoses include breast cysts, abscess, or we should also consider other skin and subcutaneous lesions such as lipoma or other lumps. So that's all for this video. Thank you.